Just a quick word about MIDI connections. It's really very straightforward. Just check that the MIDI out of your keyboard goes to the MIDI in of the computer, and that the MIDI out of the Atari goes to the MIDI in of your keyboard. So it's two-way conversation. Now, if you want to check the connections are correct, simply press a key on your keyboard, and you should see on the screen a little indicator to prove that the signal is coming through OK. Fine. Let's set up the auto-load song now, then. This is basically a song that will load while the computer is loading no data. So there's a whole load of parameters we can put into this, which will load every time you load the program. Things like names for MIDI channels, the printer adaption, the MIDI click, and other things you can set up yourself in the future. The first thing to do is to initialize the computer. We do that by taking the arrow up to Menu File and clicking on New Song. With the left button, there we go, and then click on OK. Let's now initialize the computer back to scratch. First thing, naming MIDI channels. Press Escape on the top left-hand corner of the Atari keyboard, like so. And that calls up the naming box for the MIDI channels. Now, what we're going to do here is actually give names to the individual MIDI channels. Say, for example, I've got my Korg set up on A1. We can actually give that MIDI channel a name, saying Korg M1, so that whenever I select A1, it'll say Korg M1. Likewise, I can do the same for the Proteus and any other uh, modules I'm using as well. So there's my box. I've got a, um, I'm allowed to write in the letter uh, up to eight letters long. So I'm going to type in Korg M1 from the Atari keyboard. M1. There we go. And then press Return on the keyboard to get rid of the box. So now, whenever I select MIDI channel A1, it goes to Korg M1. And I know I'm talking to the Korg M1. So that's naming MIDI channels. Now what I'd like you to do now is press pause on the video and go through all the MIDI channels you think you're going to use. Maybe A1 to 16 if you've got export, it'll be B, C and D as well. And Uniter will be E and F. Name all those channels now and then press restart on the video. So I've now named all my MIDI channels. Let's just go through and I'll show you what I've done. On A1 we've got Korg M1. I'm not using those ones. On A9 I've got my piano, that's a Proteus sound module. On A16, I've got the SR16 drum machine. B13, I've got my Proteus sound module. And the small things on F as well, which is the wave station on F1 and F2. So that's naming MIDI channels. Let's now sort out the correct printer adaption for the printer we're going to use. I'm using a 24-pin printer here, so I need to write printer adaption for that. Basically, the reason we had to do this, there are so many different printers on the market, and they all have a sort of slightly different language. We have to load the correct printer adaption for each printer or compatible printer so that they can work with the computer. To do that, first of all, we need to go to the score page. So press E on the Atari keyboard, and then click on OK. And now go to Menu Edit, Printer. Now, make sure that your Notator program disk is in the drive. If it is, then click on Load Printer Adaption with the left button. And up comes the file selector box. OK, um, click on Printer. Click on that little symbol there that opens up the printer folder. Now, my printer is Epson compatible. It's a 24-pin Epson compatible printer. So I'm opening the Epson folder by clicking on that and then click on the suitable one, 24-pin one, which is Epsom LQ. Click on that once, and then click on OK. That now loads that printer adaption from the disk, from the program disk, into the computer, and there it is on the top of the screen.